So hello everyone. Today we have a very interesting scenario and Dr. Meenal is going to uh, give a brief history of the patient and then we'll discuss uh, the today's question. Yes, Dr. Uh, today we received a patient, a 69 years old male, a known case of diabetes and hypertension. He recently presented with a acute on chronic SDH. He was treated conservatively. He recovered and was sent home. Okay. Then after, uh, then today he was readmitted in ICU with a complaint of altered sensorium. Uh, we tried to investigate him. So his uh, when in, on general examination, his GCS score came out to be around 40. Uh, on his labs revealed a sodium level of 119 and uh, uh, his labs also revealed a uh, RBS of more than 600 that is 740 to be exact to 700. be 740 so uh, so how much the sodium needs to be corrected and will the sodium correction help in his uh, in the, the correction of the state of altered sensorium okay so dr minan's question is whether this acute on chronic SDH needs to be evaluated or whether this hyponatrium is contributing yes, to the patient altered behavior in, in this present scenario. So yes, definitely we should keep a possibility that there may be acute change in the uh, SDH status. May, may patient was on antiplatelets before and now may had a fall. There could be acute change, we should evaluate. But right now when we did a blood gas, the glucose was out of range in the blood gas and the sodium levels were 115.6. When we signed in the lab, they came out to be 119 and the sugar exact value came out to be around 740. Now, every person who is listening, I mean those who know also, they need to revise it again that whenever there is a hyperglycemic state, in patients who are don't produce insulin or those who are insulin resistant, your glucose molecule cannot move inside the cell. So this creates an osmotic uh, force. Now this hyperosmolar state pulls out water from your intracellular compartment to extracellular compartment. And this hyperosmolar state calls, uh, causes a false uh, fall in the sodium levels. How much? There are different different for, uh, formulations for this. It means whenever the water comes out inside in the intravascular compartment from the uh, intracellular compartment or extracellular compartment it dilutes and causes a fall in the sodium so the formula are different they have tested in different different scenarios some say for every 100 rise above 100 the sodium level falls by 2.4 millimoles some say it falls by 1.6 on an average for all practical purposes you can remember very easily for every 100 rise of the sugar level blood glucose level above 100 you should add 2 in the sodium levels. So our patient's blood glucose is somewhere around 740. And so what is how much is the rise above 100? 640. So 640, we will add 2 for every 100. So we can add 12 yes. for up to 600 and 1 for 40 range. So how much will be the corrected sodium? 119 plus 13. 12. So 119 plus 13 will come around 132. So it's approximately in the normal range. So we can understand that this sodium level is not contributing too much in his altered status or this hyponatrium should not be corrected that much fast. In fact, you, you will see in certain patient who present with a normal sodium in patient who are so hyperglycemic. So if you correct the calculate the corrected sodium, it will come out to be hypernatremia. They will be hypernatremic and one of the most common cause is dehydration, intravascular fluid loss, which happens in hyperosmolar state, there is a osmotic diuresis. So you need to correct the osmolarity of the uh, patient by giving fluids, by giving uh, insulin, bringing down the uh, sugar level. There is a different way to approach this issue also. Easiest thing is you calculate the osmolarity of the patient, which is 2 into sodium plus sugar divided by 18 and then you know, you divided by 2.8 you will get to note that this is not isoosmolar hyponatremia it, uh, sorry this is not uh, hypoosmolar hyponatremia it will be either isoosmolar hyponatremia or hyperosmolar hyponatremia so this is not a true hyponatremia which should not be corrected in a faster way or which should not be actually corrected i hope everybody who is listening or who have listened who know knew this also before should develop a practice to always calculate the corrected sodium in patient who present with hyperglycemic states. 
Thank you, Dr. Minal, for bringing yes, up this question. I hope those who are listening will get benefited. We'll see you next time with a different practical question from the ICU scenario. Thank you.